In this video, I'm changing out a high-pressured fuel pump commonly found on Kohler fuel-injected engines. These fuel pumps are not serviceable. This isn't because they're not fixable, it's because Kohler simply refuses not to make parts available. I'm going to take this thing apart and show you a common defect that could be fixed with a simple $10 or $20 part. But instead, will cost you hundreds of dollars to replace the entire unit. This pertains not just to this welder that it's coming off of, but any machine that's powered by one of these Kohler fuel-injected engines, including lawnmowers. I'm Ferd, and enjoy the video. Okay, I'm walking in where all the crane trucks live, and I'm working on this one right here. I was here yesterday so I could figure out what the problem was with this welder generator. I found out that it's got a faulty fuel pump on it. Now, the truck's going out Monday. This is Saturday. I ordered a fuel pump last night, and it's probably going to be a week before I can get one. But I need to see if there's some way that I can get this thing running so they'll be able to use it Monday morning. If not, they'll have to take this off. You got a spare over there that they'll have to put on here in its place. But what's happening here is on the fuel pump, it's pumping gas. On the top, you've got this vent. It's right here. Pop that off and you can see gas just gushing out of there. The vent goes up here to this T, splits off, goes up to the throttle body, and then the other part goes back into the top of the gas tank. It's just a vent hole. There's not supposed to be gasoline spraying up out of this thing. So there's something wrong with the fuel pump. Let me take this one off, see if there's anything I can do with it. Okay, I got her home on the bench. I came home because it's so daggone hot up there. I got air conditioning here. But we're going to take this thing apart. And the first thing I want to do is get this plug off of here somehow. I guess we'll just have to cut away at it. Hoping that the float's cracked or something that I could just repair it. Never know until we get in there. And got her off there. To look at it, I don't really see anything wrong. If I blow in it and push up on the float, when I get about halfway, it stops the gas flow. So that's working. Got this big old fuel filter up in there. And that looks good. But my gas is coming out of this little port right here. This thing is filling up with too much gas somehow. So I'm gonna pop this float off of there. <laughs> Should pop straight up. Here's one side. And there's the other. And it's filled with gas. This thing's leaking. There's our problem. Okay, I took this upstairs and I washed it with some soap and water. Got it all dry. It's real hard. I can apply a little bit of pressure to it. As you can see, it's dry all the way around that seam where you would think that it would leak. If you look up here, you can see where the gas is coming out. Right around this thing. The gas pours over top of this down into the bowl. So over the course of time, it's filled this thing up with gas. The first thing I need to do is get the gas out of it. I found the tiniest screw that I could find out of my computer hardware collection I got going on. And I'm gonna drill a hole in the top of this thing and try to get all that gas out of it. First, I'm gonna weigh it. Let me go get my scale. 
scales on it's on grams i'm at zero and it weighs 19 grams 19 grams or 0.7 ounces and just to let you know this is for cooking <laughs> so now i'm gonna try to drill a hole for the smallest screw in the world and i'm going to use that screw to plug this hole back and hopefully it doesn't weigh too much a lot of gas in there i'll get it out i'll be back okay i got pretty much all the gas out of it so let's see how much this thing weighs now 0.3 ounces so that's down 0.4 and 8 grams now if I add this teeny tiny screw to it, it doesn't change it any I want to stress to you that what I'm about to do is not a permanent fix I only need this thing to last a week and that's it I need something that I know will seat down through that little space between the plastic and that metal piece that's embedded in it. And the only thing I can think of at the time was this POUR 15 that I've got. POUR 15 is a gas tank sealer and it will not adhere to plastic. And I know this going in. Later in the video, I'm going to cut this float in half and inspect it a little bit deeper on the inside. But for now, let's put this thing back together and see if we can fix the problem. And screw it in the hole. This stuff requires 96 hours to dry. But I'm hoping that because it's so thin, that by tomorrow morning, it should be dry enough to where I can use it. Tomorrow's Sunday, and I gotta have it ready by Monday. And you can see just that tiny little bit that I've got on there, it's just flowing all over the place. You can see that there's not much to this thing, just a few pieces. You got the pump, the float, you got this check valve, the filter, the gas gets pumped into the pump, comes into this chamber right here through the filter and then out here we've got our little repair done let's put this thing back together take it back up there get it on the truck and see how it works before i put the float in we're going to do a check on its weight to see how much weight i added to it got her on grams we had it down to eight grams. If you can see, it still weighs eight grams. So I didn't add any weight to it. That's good. This pump just unplugs from there. I didn't take it out, just left it alone. I knew that that wasn't a problem. Your filter, you have an end that's opened here, kind of closed off at this end. This goes up in there like that. Our little check valve has an O-ring on it. And then that pops up into that hole right there. Just like that, fairly easy. The needle valve faces upwards. We're gonna put that in first and just dangle it there on the end. And we'll drop our float down in there just like that grab my little pin that holds it down there lift it up a little bit slide the pin it'll just snap right down in there like this get on both sides of it push it down with my mighty fingers and it's in there when we flip it over, I want to blow through it, and I need it to stop when it's like halfway. And it kind of looks like they may be using this for a reference on that line right there. 
So that's kind of where it stops at right there. I'm going to take this O-ring off of there. Get a little bit of oil on my fingers. It's just three in one oil. And we're just going to snap it back together. Everything's sliding down here nice and easy. And we're back in business. This plug has this little gray thing up here. To take it off, you want to lift this thing up and push that forward. And you can see it move these little legs out down there at the bottom. Got to wiggle and jiggle a little bit. You should be able to pull it off of there fairly easy. Your high pressure fuel line has this little clip on it. It goes in here. So what we're going to do is slide this on there like that. As far as you can get it. Take this little clip and push it through. There we go. That's on there. Let's start it up and see what happens. This was empty, so this needs to fill up with gas. And I think it may be full now, so let's try it. Let's see if we got any gas coming out of this tube. Dry as a bone. Working the way it should. It's been three weeks. We took it out, got it back home on the bench. I've taken it apart, got all the gas out of it, and want to see if this thing has leaked any. And it does have gas in it. I've cut this float in half to look inside and see exactly why it's leaking. Here you can see when they made the mold for the float that the tab was pre-inserted as the mold was being made and it comes out on the inside. These two pieces have separated from each other leaving a space for gas to seep in between. At this point I don't have a solution to fix this float with no parts available, you could buy a $50 aftermarket fuel pump and use those parts from that. But then, why not just use the fuel pump? It most likely came from the same factory. If this wasn't commercial equipment and was for my personal lawnmower, I would have never spent that kind of money to replace it with the OEM fuel pump. The quality that you see in this Kohler fuel pump is equal to or lesser than the quality that you'll get out of an aftermarket part. At this point, I'm done with it, but this would make a good conversation in the comments. If you have a solution that could help somebody, sure would be a great place to share it. If nothing else in this video, you saw the symptoms, how it works, and how easy it is to replace. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some good information out of it. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button on the way out. Got a lot of good videos up there and I got a lot more coming. Hit that notification bell. You'll get notified as soon as I put them up. Trying to fix one of these non-serviceable Kohler fuel pumps? Having trouble with it like I did in this one? Have fun! <laughs>